In this video, I want to talk about second order linear differential equations with constant coefficients. Uh, and I'm going to talk about a method that works quite generally for these equations. Um, and it requires something called an ansatz. So I'm going to refer to it here as the ansatz method. And that is, we're going to propose a guess at the form of the solution, leaving some details still unclear or uncertain. And we'll plug that into the equation and simplify our differential equation to an algebraic equation. But before I get there, let me just try and motivate the reason for um, the guess I'm going to use in the ansatz. And I'm going to do that by looking at this particular second order equation, which is y double prime plus y prime equals zero. So this is a kind of a simple one in the sense that, first of all, the coefficients are both one on the y double prime and y term, y prime term, and there's no y term in this equation. What that means is I can integrate the both sides once without any problem. So I get y prime plus y equal constant. And then here I have a uh, problem that I can address with uh, an integrating factor, and that happens to be e to the t. So I have e to the t times, times y all prime is equal to c times e to the t. And now I take an antiderivative again, and I get e to the t times y equal c e to the t, it's its own antiderivative, plus another constant. Or maybe I'll call that c1 and c2. It's a more traditional terminology. So that's c1 and c2. So now I can solve for y of t, and y of t is equal to c1 plus c2 e to the minus t. So you'll notice um, when we were doing first order equations, we found exponentials always cropped up as the nature of our solutions, the structure of our solutions. And here again, for this particular second order equation, we see exponentials creeping in again. Here's an exponential that's e to the minus t, and we can think of this as an exponential that's e to the zero t. So it's really both of these terms here as part of the general solution are exponentials in some sense. Okay, so what does that indicate? So let's see. If I have a more general first or uh, second order linear differential equation with constant coefficients, so a, b, mm -hmm. and c here are all constants and homogeneous as well. And I'm going to propose now that the solution to this is exponential. So I'll say it's e to the rt. Okay, so um, now I can take this. This is my ansatz. This is my guess at the form of the solution, but I've left r is to be determined. So how do I do that? I plug this guess at a solution into the equation, and I get a r squared e to the rt. That's two derivatives of e to the rt. It just gives me e to the rt with an r hopping out twice by the chain rule. Plus b r e to the rt plus c e to the rt equals zero. And you'll notice e to the rt is common to all three terms, so I can divide through by it. It's never equal to zero. And I'm left with a r squared plus b r plus c equal zero. And so now we have a quadratic equation instead of having a differential equation. So in any particular example, we just have to determine what these r values might be. And there, in general, there will be two. There'll be some special cases where there's only one. Um, and so we're going to have a whole class of, a uh, whole set of um, three different classes of possible scenarios here. Uh, well, actually, maybe a little bit more than three. Uh, but basically, this has now simplified our problem down quite a bit. Okay, so uh, looking at the previous example, how do we um, how do we use the ansatz method for this one? And you'll see how the same solution is going to come out here. So I'm going to guess that y is equal to e to the rt, and I get that I have r squared e to the rt, but I'm going to cancel that plus r times e to the rt equals 0. And this can factor into r and r plus 1. So I find that r is equal to 0 and r is equal to minus 1 are both solutions. So what that means is we have two solutions to the differential equation. And when we have two solutions, we can always multiply them by constants or add together. In fact, we can do both. And that's how we form what we call the general solution for the second order equation. And that gives us y of t is equal to a constant multiplied by the first case, which is r equals 0. And so I'm going to have e to the 0t here. 
and plus C2 e to the minus 1 times t. And that is just the answer that we got before, C1 plus C2 e to the minus t. So this is the first time we've arrived at an expression that has, well, it's not the first time, actually, uh, for a second order, well, here we, we, we ended up with this expression that had these constants here where they appeared by antiderivatives, right? We took, we took integrals or antiderivatives at some point, and those c values appeared. Here we've done something different. We found two specific solutions here. We found e to the zero, which is, I guess, just one, and e to the minus t, and we've said, okay, we're going to use this feature of linearity of the equation to multiply each of them by a constant. So c1 times 1 will also be a solution. c2 times e to the minus t will be a solution. And then we can add those together because the sum of two solutions will also be a solution. And so that's how we constructed this expression. So these c's didn't come from antiderivatives, but they kind of take the place of those c's that were used to coming up uh, through the other methods we've seen. Okay, so let's look at a couple other examples. So let's say, um, let's say y double prime plus, oh, no, let's do minus, minus 4y equals 0. So now hopefully you can see where this is going to go. A y double prime becomes an r squared, and there's a 1 in front of it, and then there's no y prime, so there's no b, b is equal to 0, and then I get minus 4 equals 0. And so in this case, I get r plus 2, r minus 2 equals 0, which tells me that I have two solutions, r equal minus 2 and r equal plus 2. And now I can just write down the general solution, y of t is equal to c1 e to the minus 2t plus c2 e to the 2t. And that is the general solution for this case. Okay, so what we've seen so far is, in both of these cases, we found two distinct real roots. So that's our first case. So that's when the quadratic equation has two distinct real roots. It's quite straightforward. We end up with an e to the 2t and an e to the minus 2t, and we can add those together and we get a general solution. There are going to be slightly trickier cases when we get one repeated root or when we get complex roots. And I will go through those cases in um, separate videos.